Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of ordering numbers, specifically how we can order numbers that include both positive and negative numbers, and we'll do it in 5 minutes or less. So I've got a series of 6 quantities here, and let's say I want to put them in order from least to greatest. Now, one of the things that's going to be difficult is that I've got some percents, I've got some fractions, and I've got just a decimal. So we need to make them all look the same. And what I want to do to kind of keep track of it is I want to make a number line. I'm not going to do much with it yet, but since I've got positive and negative, I am going to want to go ahead and keep my track of everything that's going on. And I'm just going to label that zero. That's going to be right in the middle. I don't know the scale of any of the other ones. Let's start looking at these items one at a time. And I'm going to make them all decimals. You need to make them all look the same, either all percents, all fractions, or all decimals. The fractions won't be that helpful if you have different denominators. So my suggestion is always make everything a decimal. So let's start with that 4.3%. Now, that's not just a 4.3. Remember, the percent, when we change from a percent to a decimal, we move the decimal twice, but we move it over twice to the left, once, twice. Sometimes there's no decimal there, so it's always going to be the digit, uh, the ones place, we're going to move it from right after that to two places left, but this place actually has a decimal. We have a 4.3, so we can use that. So my decimal's right there. And so really, this is 43 thousandths. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda write this right here. And eventually we'll put that there. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be very close to zero. I just don't know how big my number line needs to be. So I'm gonna use this table over here on the left, just kinda keep track and then we'll put it on the number line in a moment. So we've got that one down, 3 25ths. Now you can always divide up if you want. You can always divide up 25 into three. That will always turn a fraction into a decimal, but sometimes you don't have to make it that difficult. And I always like to think, is there any way that I can make an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 10, 100, or 1,000? Because think of your first three places in the place value tenths, hundredths, thousandths. And yeah, I could make this into hundredths real easy if I just multiply by four. So what we can do is we can make an equivalent fraction. 3 25ths is the same as 12 hundredths, and 12 hundredths is the same as 0 0.12. So we've got that one down. Now what we need to realize here is we've got a negative there. So no matter what we do on that eight thirds, it's going to be negative and it's going to be on the left side of zero. So no matter how large or small it is, this is going to be smaller than any positive number. All negative numbers are smaller than positive numbers. So let's go with the eight thirds. Eight thirds doesn't fit that rule. You can't necessarily turn a third into a tenth, hundredth, or thousandth. So on that one, we can divide up. So let's just divide up. That's going to go in twice, almost three times. And that's got a remainder of two. So I'm just going to say two and two thirds. Now, I want it to be a decimal. So two thirds, one third, two thirds, those are both what we call benchmark fractions. So we should know that that is going to be 2.6 repeating. And that's just going to have to be close enough for us. 2.6 bar, 2.6 repeating with a negative. 18%, that's pretty simple. You got a decimal after the ones place, once, twice, boom. So I've got 0.18%. I've got my negative 1.3, you don't have to do anything to change that, so that's gonna be good. I got negative 9 eighths, all right? So that's gonna be negative one and one eighth, just change that improper fraction to a mixed number. And then my eighths. Okay, your eighths you can change into thousandths if you multiply by 125. That's just a little tricky you want, might want to keep in mind. So 125 thousandths, negative one. So I'm going to make that negative one and 125 thousandths. Okay, so moving from left to right, least to greatest, we have negative two and six tenths repeating. Then we have in succession negative one and three tenths, and then negative one and 125 thousandths, all the negatives are gonna be the smallest. Then we get into our positive numbers and they're all stacked up together. Our first is gonna be 43 thousandths. Next we have 12 hundredths. And then finally our largest number is actually 18 hundredths.